One of the most frequently asked questions I get is what has the best third row in America? So let's answer that question today at the Chicago Auto Show. Starting with this Ford Expedition, I'm going to hop into every vehicle that has a third row on this show floor and we'll answer the question, what is the best third row? Well, to answer this question, I'm also going to cover which vehicles will allow you to leave a child seat latch anchored into place, still access the third row. Obviously, points for this Ford. As for the third row itself, I'm sitting in a more upright position than in some. The seat bottom cushion is not slammed to the ground. I have about half an inch of legroom left and maybe a quarter inch of headroom. Not a lot back here, even in this big SUV. On to the Explorer. You can't leave a child seat attached to this seat and still fold it forward. But third row headroom is still pretty generous. Legroom, however, you can see the difference here. My legs are definitely a decent amount above the seat bottom cushion, so it's going to be less comfortable for adults. Similar kind of legroom, actually, as far as knees touching that seat back goes. Relatively similar headroom as well. Let's pause for just a moment and talk about how the graphic on your screen works. On this side of the screen, you'll see the common seating configurations for the vehicle we're taking a look at. Six seat, seven seat, eight seat, etc. The little green icons indicate isofix or latch anchor locations. Those are the non-seat belt child seat anchor locations. This does not refer to top tethers. Some vehicles will have more top tethers than latch anchors at the bottom. At the bottom of your screen, you'll find critical dimensions for every vehicle we're looking at. We have row one over there, how its headroom stacks up against the average, whether it's above or below average, and the number of seats in each row. Some vehicles get to seven passengers by having three seats in the middle row right there, row two, or they might have two seats there and three in the way back, so keep that in mind. Down there on the right side of your screen, you'll find a combined legroom figure and how that again compares to the average for three row vehicles in America. Combined legroom is the best way to think of a three row vehicle because remember, the front row and the second row typically slide forward and backward. So looking simply at second row legroom in a vacuum doesn't really make sense because where is that second row seat positioned? Where's the front row seat positioned? All of that will impact how things go on back there in the way back. Below the legroom figures, you'll find cargo room figures behind the third row, how that compares to the average, and then cargo figures if you have the third row folded. Now let's get back into it. Want well, a third row and a Honda logo? There are two options. This is the new Pilot. This second row is not as child seat friendly as some, but it does have a really cool removable middle seat if you get the right version of Pilot and it straps into the trunk. Jumping into the way back, you can see the seat bottom cushion is pretty low to the ground. Legroom, that is pretty reasonable. I have about an inch of legroom left, so not far off where we see the Grand Highlander. The third row appears to be a little bit narrower than the Grand Highlander, but wider than the Highlander. And headroom, that is really good. This seat is all the way back. You can see I could lift it a little further forward. And here, I've got about an inch and a half of headroom. Moving into Honda's family hauler, the Odyssey, these second row seats also don't let you leave a child seat latch anchored into place, but you can take them out. Warning though, they're pretty heavy. And obviously outside the Honda Jet, this has the best third row in Honda's lineup. I don't know if you can see too well, but I have about two inches of legroom. Seat bottom cushion, definitely higher off the ground than the new Pilot. Headroom, pretty similar to the Pilot actually. So taller folks may not be that much more comfortable in here. We do find a bit more usable headroom in the Pacifica. Next up is the Highlander, not the grand one that's coming soon. This is another one of those tilt and slide arrangements where you can't leave a child seat latched into place, but getting into the third row is pretty easy. Let's check it out. And once you're back here, we find a pretty small third row. In fact, this is one of the smallest third rows that offers three seat belts, but those three people, not a lot of room back here. You can see my knees are practically in my chest and my head is definitely touching the ceiling. I really can't get back there to that headrest. Toyota's latest three row entry is the Grand Highlander. This is definitely bigger than a regular Highlander. And as far as combined legroom goes, it is now at the top of the charts for the three row midsize segment. We have absolutely gobs of legroom. So, so much legroom, it's actually difficult to get that second row seat, pull it back here into place. This is all the way back in its tracks. I have about two inches of legroom left, but perhaps more important for rear seat comfort, the seat bottom cushion is not slammed all the way to the ground. It is certainly higher off the ground than the Highlander or the Honda Pilot. Not as high, obviously, as certain minivans or, of course, some of those full-size SUVs. But as far as mid-size SUVs, this is very, very comfortable. The third row has a tiny middle seat right here. It is still a little on the small side, but because this is wider than a regular Highlander, it's actually about four feet or so across the back. You could fit three of me back here in a pinch. It will be a little bit cozy, however. We have three sets of latch anchors, one on each of the outboard second row seating positions then one back here in the third row although this one might be a little bit tricky to use because as you can see it's definitely a decent distance from this seat back over here to the rear doors 
How about Toyota's largest vehicle, the new Sequoia? This is another seat that doesn't allow you to leave a child seat latched into place. I mean, unless your kid's like a quarter inch tall. You might think that Toyota's biggest vehicle has the biggest third row, and you would be right as far as width. If you need to put three across the back, this is gonna be the most comfortable, but as far as headroom height goes, and obviously seat bottom cushion off the floor, that's gonna be the new Grand Highlander. For the best third row in the Toyota lineup though, you have to turn to the Sienna. Although there is one expected twist in this generation Sienna, the second row seats don't come out and they don't fold into the floor. They do however collapse into the front seat, but not in a way that lets you leave a child seat in place. <laughs> <laughs> With the third row seat not in place, obviously there's a lot more room, but back here we find quite simply Toyota's best third row seat. Seat bottom cushion is higher off the ground than in pretty much everything else. These seats offer recline, and even in their most reclined format, have a reasonable amount of headroom. Not quite as wide as the uh, Sequoia's back row, but pretty darn close. Nissan was one of the first companies to pioneer a seat design like this that lets you leave a child seat in place, so points there. But we have a pretty small third row back here. You can see my knees are practically in my chest. Foot room is a little bit limited. My knees are not touching the seat back. And headroom, that's pretty reasonable. Also, we have a fairly wide third row, definitely wider than the Highlander. What about Nissan's Big Boy Armada or, of course, the Infiniti QX80? This is another one of those flip and tumble second row seats. Obviously no child seat, and we have a pretty high floor back here. The raised floor leads us to a third row that I think is slightly more comfortable than the Pathfinder, which I had not expected, but it mainly has to do with the cushioning on this seat. It is much cushier, much more comfortable, but not necessarily roomier. It's pretty similar in terms of width. My head is actually touching the ceiling, trying to go back there towards that headrest, but I have about an inch of legroom left. Next up, the most popular SUV in America, the Grand Cherokee, is now available with a third row. The second row seats are among the most child-friendly, again moving in that same way as the Nissan Pathfinder, and that applies to both the passenger and the driver's side. Now, in case you're wondering, all these are being tested with the second row slid all the way back. Here I have about an inch and a half of legroom, so a bit more than the average crossover that has three rows in America, but not as big as some. Also, Grand Cherokee, only two seats back here in the way back. That does make it more comfortable for adult passengers. You can see my legs are still pretty high off that seat cushion, but thanks to the boxy profile, I still have about an inch of headroom, although if I try and put my head back there to the headrest, it is hitting the ceiling, not the headrest itself. Want a Jeep and more room? There's a Wagoneer for that. As with most three row vehicles in the Stellantis portfolio, the Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer's second row seats still move in that same way. And although I don't have much more headroom than we find in the Grand Cherokee L, you'll notice my thighs are practically on the seat bottom cushions. This is gonna be much more comfortable for long journeys. But as far as that headroom figure goes, unquestionably more here. My head's not anywhere touching the ceiling, head's on the headrest. This is one of the best third rows in America, but is it the best? On to another minivan, another classic third row option. Second row seats that let you leave a child seat in place. This is the only minivan to do that in America and the only minivan where they fold flat into the floor. But not so fast, that doesn't happen if you buy the hybrid. Also, these don't allow you to leave a child seat latched into place. So hybrid, not hybrid, child seat or no, that's a big decision to make. But the third row, that's basically the same between the two models. Seat bottom cushion, a little bit closer to the ground than the Grand Wagoneer and Wagoneer. Headroom, that is among the best here. I have about an inch and a half of headroom and gobs and gobs of legroom at that second row seat there, maybe about three and a half inches. This is one of the best back seats. Hey look, it's a Durango. I own one of these, but not because it's child seat friendly, because it's not. It has the fold and tumble second row, but the third row is usable for adults depending on their general shape. I have about an inch of legroom. The seat bottom cushion is a little higher off the ground than something like a regular Highlander or a number of those mid-sized three row crossovers. Headroom, that depends on how you sit in here. If I'm sitting like this, I have about an inch left, but I can't put my head back there to the headrest. Since the X7 is fancy, we have a powered second row seat to enable that third row access, but it does take a while. As you can see in the way back, headroom is not the issue, it really is legroom. This second row seat is not all the way back. It actually would go that much further back. So you can see I would get a lot less legroom back here. Headroom, however, that is still really generous back here. Two person, third row only, but I do get some climate control controls on the roof. Want something with more luxury flair? There's an MDX for that. And red leather, ooh la la, but not child seat friendly. The middle seat's removable, but there's no place to put it in the trunk like you do find in the Pilot. This second row is strictly two passenger and it is definitely tighter than the Pilot. Seat bottom cushion is closer to the ground. My knees are digging into this seat back. And headroom, well, maybe the less said about that, the better. 
Although let's be honest, no back seat was as tight as the one in the former RXL, which is why it doesn't exist anymore. But Lexus still has two options for you while we wait for the new TX. This is the GX, it's the small option. The GX is known internationally as the Land Cruiser Prado. It is a body on frame, rugged SUV, and that means less space inside. You see I'm really high off the ground. This second row seat slides forward like this, but there's not a lot of room to get into the way back. And when I do get into the way back, there's just not a lot of room back here, period. As you can see, the seat bottom cushion is definitely very, very low. My knees are certainly in my chest and not a lot of legroom. They're really digging into that seat back right there. Headroom, that's actually not too bad. And I got some air vents back here too. Big brother to the Land Cruiser Prado is the Land Cruiser known as the Lexus LX in America. But despite it being new, it has one of those fold and tumble second rows. And a seat bottom cushion that might be even closer to the ground than the one that we find in the Lexus GX. They are certainly tiny seat bottom cushions as well. You can see that size there. Decent amount of legroom though. More than we find in the GX, about two and a half inches. So no digging in there. And as far as headroom goes, well, I could find that headrest somehow back there. Looking for a Kia with the most room? That would of course be the Carnival. Let's talk about the Kias in declining order. The Carnival has a super fancy second row with available ottomans, but it doesn't tilt and slide with a child seat latched into place. For the uh, third row access, you gotta tilt it forward. Or if you want two and a half rows, you can for some reason slide the middle seat all the way back to there. Not quite clear why. As with most minivans, the third row is pretty comfortable and you can see the sort of staggered arrangement with the seats there, middle seat, other seat. Uh, I have about an inch of legroom left. Second row moved all the way back seat bottom cushion definitely higher off the ground than average headroom though that is a bit more limited than some of the other minivans i can't quite get my head upright next up the popular telluride one of the boxier options in this segment it has a second row that tilts and slides forward sorry child seats not happening here but in compensation we have one of the biggest third rows in this segment about an inch and a half of leg room there about an inch of headroom as well. I can't touch that seat back right there, but I can sit very comfortably just like in the Pilot and the Grand Highlander. On the other hand, not as wide as the Grand Highlander. So third seat right here, but it is a little small. Smallest, but maybe most interesting in the lineup, the Sorento, available as a regular, a hybrid, or a plug-in hybrid with three rows. Over in the Sorento, still no child seat love. And I'm a little bit torn about the third row. This is about the same width as the Highlander, but Kia doesn't try and jam three seat belts back here. So maximum capacity is gonna be more comfortable than in the regular Highlander, but the seat bottom cushion's still pretty close to the ground. And headroom, you definitely have to sit forward if you wanna get some headroom. Otherwise, you're right back there towards the headrest. Next up, GMC's Acadia, which is now on the smaller side of the three row segment. It used to be big, now it's gone small. Very much a Highlander competitor. The Acadia's second row moves in the same manner, so not too child seat friendly there. Although the Acadia has a trick up its sleeve on the passenger side, we have a child seat friendly second row seat and decent legroom, about an inch going on back here. Seat bottom cushion still pretty close to the ground, not as close as some. And headroom, again, it depends on the position of your head. The most popular full-size SUVs in America are the GM Quadruplets, the Yukon, the Tahoe, the Suburban, and the Escalade. Let's talk about all of them together with this GMC. The seat bottom cushion is definitely higher off the ground than General Motors' crossover lineup, so certainly more comfortable for third row passengers. And a lot of headroom going on back here as well. If my head's back here against the headrest, I have about half an inch. This is a little bit less comfortable than the Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer, but honestly, the difference is pretty small. Now, the cool thing about GM's full-size SUVs is that they come in not only two different sizes like we find in the Ford and the Jeep, but the bigger size actually gives us a bigger third row. But when you hop into the back, you'll notice we do get a little bit more legroom. Also, headroom is very generous because the profile moves further rearward, and that gives me, even with my head back here towards the headrest, about an inch and a half of headroom left. The seats themselves, they're not as comfortable as what we find in the Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer, but headroom is actually a little bit more generous if you're the kind of person that wants to relax in the third row. From Buick, we have the Enclave. Like the Acadia, we have one second row seat that's not child seat friendly, and one that is. Unlike the Acadia though, we have a slightly bigger third row. Seat bottom cushion's pretty comfortable, three seats across the back, about half an inch of legroom, not as much as you might be thinking for a vehicle this size. Headroom, again, it depends on the position of your head, but certainly more comfortable for a natural sitting position than the GMC. The Traverse is the bow tie that's easier to park. Same second row seat design we saw in the Buick and the GMC. Child seat friendly on the passenger side, not so much on the driver's side. And third row room that is pretty similar to the Buick. With this second row seat all the way back, my knees are really digging into the seat back there because the profile of GM's triplets as far as their 
three row crossovers go, it's not quite all the same. The parts are arranged in different manners. From Hyundai, we have the Palisade. There's no smaller version and there's no minivan. The Palisade is the sister ship to the Telluride, so the second row seats move in the same way. And that means back here in the third row, we have very similar kinds of legroom, maybe about a quarter an inch of legroom with this second row seat moved all the way back. Pretty decent headroom though. That's been one benefit to the Palisade and the Telluride is that I still have about half an inch of headroom sitting in a very natural position. The head does of course touch the ceiling if I move all the way back there. Some nice touches back here like the air vents too. Now let's get to some of the vehicles that were not at the auto show, but fortunately I have footage of them and I've been able to crawl around most of these. So let's talk about the Mercedes-Benz GLS. We have above average headroom in the second row, especially back there in the third row. So it's pretty accommodating. And because this is not a body on frame SUV, even though it's smaller than something like an Escalade, we have a pretty decent amount of legroom inside, about four inches more than average. The downside, the cargo area is a little bit small and getting back there into the third row can be a bit tricky. On the other hand, every version of the GLS will offer you four sets of latch anchors, including two back there in the way back. Next up, we have the Volvo XC90, and these specifications apply to the plug-in hybrid and the regular hybrid both, because nothing changes back there in the second and third row for those models. You'll notice that legroom is a little bit below average. You cannot leave a child seat latch anchored into place in the second row and still easily access the third row, unless you get the two seat second row, and then you'd have to climb through the middle, which can be a bit tricky. Now the third row itself has reasonable headroom back there, but legroom is a little bit limited simply because the XC90 is not one of the larger vehicles in the group. The Mitsubishi Outlander is one of the smallest three-row vehicles available in North America. We happen to have a long-term plug-in hybrid as a tester here, so be sure and stay tuned for more content on that one. In the meantime, let's check out its third row. The first and second rows in the Outlander and Outlander plug-in hybrid are essentially the same. This front seat's all the way back in its tracks, not a lot of room going on here, but things do change back there in the third row for the Outlander plug-in hybrid because of where the battery is located. This third row is one of the smallest available in North America. The GLB has a bit more headroom actually than we find in the Outlander and Outlander plug-in hybrid. Now because of the battery pack's location, we lose a little bit of legroom and we also lose some headroom versus the non-plug-in hybrid version of the Outlander. But currently this third row, the one in the Tesla Model Y and the one in the GLB, these are the smallest and perhaps the silliest third rows available in North America. I do though like that this exists. Uh, clearly, you could put smaller folks back here. I'm six feet tall. There's just no way for me to get comfortable back here in the third row at all. But if you had some smaller folks and you needed to be able to carry five or six people in a little bit more comfort, you could actually do that. This does seat seven because we have a middle seat right there in the second row. Uh, but if you wanted people to have uh, six seats and there were shorter people in the back, there'd be a little bit more room overall. Also on the small side, we have the Genesis GV80. It has a very tiny optional third row. It's only available on one trim. And speaking of very difficult to find third rows, it appears that you still may be able to get a third row optional in the Mercedes-Benz GLE and the BMW X5. It's been really difficult to actually find a new one or configure a new one and then get an order. Dealers I called on the BMW side of things said, yep, the website will let you do it, but I cannot actually order you one. With all of that up in the air, I just decided not to include those vehicles in this video, but the situation is gonna be pretty similar to what we see in the GV80 here. That's gonna be a very tight, very occasional use third row. And it's worth noting that in a vehicle like the Mercedes-Benz GLB, they actually have a specification saying you have to be this short to ride this ride. This is something I don't recall seeing in any other vehicle in North America with a teeny tiny third row, but it's right in the instruction manual for the Mercedes-Benz GLB that you need to be under 66.5 inches in order to use the third row. According to a quick Google search, that means that the third row in the GLB, and to be perfectly frank, any of the other emergency use third rows, really should be limited to kids under about 14 or 15 years old. According to Google, that's about the average height of the average 14 or 15 year old. So keep that in mind if you're considering any of those smaller three row vehicles. Rather unfortunately, I have not been able to drive an R1S, but I have been able to crawl around the back seat. And the first thing you'll notice is that like some of the other upcoming three row EVs that are gonna be on the scene soon, it has a lot of headroom in the third row, thanks to that very flat floor and the very boxy proportions. 
Also, a solid competitor to this will likely be the Kia EV9. It actually performs better back there in the third row than the Telluride, something that I did not expect. If you want to know more about that, be sure and check out that upcoming EV9 video. It's going to be significantly less expensive than the R1T. Now, on the downside, because of the R1T's off-road mission and some of the general design choices for the vehicle, the interior, the cab portion, is not as large as you might think. And this is why we actually find below average combined legroom in the R1S, despite it being relatively large on the outside. Also, the cargo room figures are just a little bit below average. The new three-row option from Mazda is the CX-90. Eventually, this will replace the CX-9, but the formula doesn't change appreciably over that CX-9. So you'll notice that combined legroom is still below average. On the inside, most of the dimensions are actually very similar to a Toyota Highlander and not the Grand Highlander. I'm talking about the smaller model. That's despite the fact that the CX-90 is certainly on the large side for this segment. That's because they went to a rear-wheel drive platform with a really long inline six engine up front. It looks absolutely gorgeous from the outside, but you will certainly notice that the interior is a bit cramped. And one thing that surprised me is that unlike the CX-9, the CX-90 does not allow you to leave a child seat latch anchored into place and still tilt and slide the seats forward. But it is one of the few vehicles that in its instruction manual explicitly says you could latch anchor a child seat in the center position using two of the outboard latch anchor locations. However, you can't put three seats across. If you do that and you want to use those latch anchors, you can only put the one child seat right there in the middle. Also a little unusual, the CX-90 is available as a six seat, a seven seat, or an eight seat crossover. From Tesla, we have two different three-row vehicles, the Model X and the Model Y. If you really plan on using the third row, you're going to want the Model X. It has more headroom in the second row, notably more headroom, and of course, a more accommodating third row as well. There are a few different ways to get your Model X. You can get it with two seats or three seats, and there are several different seat options depending on the year and the version of Model X you're looking at. So be sure and really pay attention to some of those details. My one complaint in the second row is that if you're sitting in the middle, the Falcon Wing doors do impact headroom right there in the middle seat location. It's more generous in the outboard positions. Also, the third row seat is not as comfortable as you might expect based on the size and the price of the Model X. Headroom all the way around is pretty decent, but legroom is pretty constricted with under 110 inches of total legroom. Also, behind the third row, you have a fairly small cargo area. On the other hand, of course, you do get the front trunk. But you'll notice that even with that third row folded, it doesn't increase to any sort of earth-shattering totals there. And logically, things get even smaller with the Tesla Model Y. This is actually one of the smallest third rows that you can get in North America. Really think of it more as an emergency third row. You'll notice that combined legroom is barely over 100 inches, so that is significantly tighter than practically everything else out there. Really, the Model Y and the Mitsubishi Outlander are in this absolutely itty bitty teeny tiny third row segment. Uh, you could also get something like the Volkswagen Tiguan, which is not on this list with the third row because I wasn't able to get my hands on one. Thanks to the combination of child seat friendly second row seats and this third row seat that is really quite high off the ground, the Wagoneer gets the most comfortable third row in America title outside of a full size van, of course, for the moment. A lot of folks don't think about things like the seat bottom cushion position. This is a differentiator between this and the General Motors and Ford SUVs. This is higher. Now, if you have kids that have short legs, they're not going to find this as comfortable. But for adults like me sitting in the back, this is far more comfortable for a longer road trip than anything else. And I still have about an inch and a half of headroom outside of a van van. This is the best third row in America, even besting the Chrysler Pacifica.